Okay, so I had a student had a question on how to work this problem 19 out of chapter 8 in SEPI for my master's degree class. So I thought it might be an interesting way to solve, an interesting problem to solve. Uh, we can solve it several ways. Previously we just did two stock portfolios, now we're doing three security or three stock portfolios. So the equation gets a little bit more complicated. So let's just go ahead and, go ahead and get started and I'll just take this information and uh, copy it into Excel. Right click copy and we'll open up Excel. And uh, let me just go ahead and I'm going to go given. And we'll paste that in here. And uh, I just I don't really like that formatting, so I'm just going to take a blank cell. I'm going to format that. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go get rid of this column. Shift it to the left. And uh, these are all returns, so we'll go ahead and make them percent. Okay, so that's what we have. And uh, we want to find... Um, to save time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy the problem right in here. So basically, we want to find for part one the expected return. Part two and three, we want to find the... Uh, so this is called the variance-covariance matrix. In fact, let me insert the symbol for variance-covariance matrix. Uh, usually, it looks like this. Okay. So this, so this whole thing... Let me just move this down. So this whole thing is called, that's a symbol, that's a lot of times it's called the VAR, COVAR matrix. And the reason is because it has the variances, the variances are in the diagonals and the covariances are in these cells. So this covariance is equivalent to this covariance and that covariance is equivalent. Because A, this is AB and this is BA, this is AC and this is CA. Uh, it doesn't matter, so, so we only need the upper triangle or the lower triangle. So the variances are on the diagonal and the covariances are uh, on those three. So this can get bigger and bigger depending on how many um, how many securities you have. So we want to find for, we want to find, uh, so the way I read this, I want to find the variance for stock C because it's that times that is a variance. Here I want to find the covariance for, for B and C because this is C, column C and row B. Also, this would also be the covariance for B and C because it would be, B and C's. So this and this is equivalent. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, and then part four uh, says with this, with, the, with these weights, what's the expected return on the portfolio, and what is the, what is the portfolio standard deviation? So that's what we want to find. So for a solution, um, well, expected return isn't any different than. Uh, Let's just go ahead and copy this. So expected return isn't any different than when you do a two stock portfolio. Each individual stock is going to be equal to the average of uh, all of these, right? And I could just copy that across. And that would be the answer to the first one, okay? And they wanted, they wanted to know it for, for stock B, so it would be that one, right? So for this, for two and three, um, well, we could do this a long way. And I could just go equals variance, and uh, I think it's var dot s, var dot s, variance of a sample of these, right? And this is going to be equal to the variance dot sample of these and this is equal to the variance dot sample of these so that's pretty easy this is going to be equal to the covariance whoop, equals covariance dot sample and this is between B and A so it would be A doesn't matter which order we do these in remember and B whoops A comma B I'm on a B right and then uh, I could I could actually 
copy this over. So this should be AC, so I'm going to move this over to AC. All right. I can copy it down. And this should be BC, so I have to move this up and move this over. And this would be the answer to uh, find the covariance between B and C, which, uh, that, so we have the 0 0.067, 0 0.00217 for the variance of stock C, and 0 0.004157 for the covariance between B and C. And you can see that's what we got. Okay. All right. So that's pretty easy. Um, so the next thing it says, it says these are the weights. Yeah. So we have these weights. Of course, it gives you these two weights. You know, they have to equal 100%, right? So we know that this is equal to um, 1 minus this minus this. So we had to solve for that. And we want the expected return of the portfolio. And that's pretty easy. It's just like before when it's just going to equal to be the sum product of um, these expected returns and these weights that we have for our portfolio. Again, if we had $1,000, it would be 400 here, 200 here, and 400 here. So that's the amount we have invested in each one of those stocks. So this is, so of course, we'd want to make this... Uh, percent take it out a couple places so that would be the answer to uh, to uh, uh, part four and we can double check point four four point three six seven four point three point zero four three six seven they did in decimal we did in percent so the portfolio standard deviation is a little bit different uh, I remember before we did a two stock for for the three stock portfolio the formula gets longer okay as you imagine, as, as you add more stocks, this gets kind of crazy to kind of calculate it this way. But this would be the formula to calculate it. And, uh, and if you recall, um, since we don't have, we, we didn't calculate the correlation. So we could, so we calculated the covariance. So we can substitute in, if you multiply both of these, equa both of this equation on both sides by that, this and this times this equals a covariance. So you can see here where these three are, I can substitute covariance. Where these three are, I can substitute covariance. Where these three are, I can substitute covariance. It's very similar to how I told you uh, when we were doing the two stock portfolio, how these two equations are equivalent. Whenever you see these three, you can put covariance. So you can use easy one of those equations. You can also do the same thing. Now this is for the variance and we want a standard deviation. So we're gonna have to find the square root of all this. So let's just go ahead and start it, and this will make sense. So go equal square root, and we want the weight of A squared times the variance of A, which would be this, right? Okay, and that's going to be plus the weight of B squared times the variance of B plus the weight of C squared times the variance of C. I think, what did I do here? What did I, I did something wrong here. Let me, I did a little trouble. That plus G, G10, H7. I don't know why I didn't highlight that. Okay. And then plus, kind of weird it didn't do the colors there. Well, we'll just keep going and see if it, there should be a plus. Well, this is going to be I10 squared times I8 okay so now we have now we have uh, all the all these terms now it's going to be plus two times so we're going to start with a B right so it's going to be the weight of a times the weight of B times the covariance a B which is that plus two times now we're going to go to AC which are going to be weight of a times the weight of C times the ver covariance uh, AC because we're on AC now which was going to be this one and it's going to be plus 2 times now we're on BC so it's going to be the weight of B times the weight of C oh I forgot the 2 oh I got the 2 and then times uh, so now we're BC so BC is going to be that one 
and we close our square root and we got it right let's see if we got it right oh so let me double check so we got to double check it here so it's g10 so it's a squared times variance of a plus b squared times the variance of b plus c squared times i8 which is variance of c so we got that right plus 2 times a times b times h6 which is the is a covariance for a b plus 2 times g times c and g and c g or g10 and, and i10 are ac so i want the covariance ac which is uh, i6 that's right plus 2 times h10 h10 is b plus uh, i10 which is c times i7 which is oh so we want i6 so i made a mistake on that last one because this is ac so this last one right here we already used I. No, hold on. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so hold on. G10 times I10. G10 times I10 is AC, which is that one. Okay, and this is uh, H10 times I10, which is BC, and BC should be I7. So that looks right. So how come that didn't come out right? Two times, two times. Because I don't think that's the answer. The answer is supposed to be 0 0.08. So maybe let me just double check. That's the variance of that. These all look correct. Those look correct. It was supposed to be forty, twenty, forty. Oh, you just give me a sec here. Something's wrong. Okay. Um, G10 squared. Right? Times the variance G6. H10 squared. Times the variance H. Oh. I forgot the square in here. Squared and times. And one little thing like that. And there you go. That's the answer. So I just forgot one little... So that just shows you it can be very complicated, can it? So that's just with three stocks. Can you imagine if you had 20 stocks, how long this formula could get? So um, so this can get very tricky sometimes if you try to use this uh, this way. So anyway, so that, that's how you would do it. So if you want to stop right there, I mean, you can just go ahead and work the problem. But now I'm going to show you a, an, another way to do this. I'm going to show you a, something called, I'm going to show you a different way. If you want to keep watching, you can watch that. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to do it when you have a lot of, you don't have to do this crazy formula. And th this, this is something you can use when you have a lot of, uh, a lot of different uh, securities. Um, so what, what I'm going to do is, so, so I'm going to go, I'm going to do something called the X matrix, which is the excess returns. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Paste it here. And... And this is going to be the, uh, the returns in excess of the e and of the mean. So this is going to be equal to this minus this 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 mean return, expected return. And uh, so I'm going to go F4 until I have it like that. And I'm going to and each one of those returns, I'm going to subtract the uh, the mean return from it, right? Um, so how many do we have? We have six. One, two, three. So I'm going to get rid of this one, and then I can copy this across and copy it down and if you notice I, I just have for the, the the number so I want to I want to not move up and down but I can move across so that allows us so um, so uh, we can double check here 5 minus 6.17 is a negative 1.17 so that looks like we did that so I'm gonna highlight that and I'm just gonna call that the X matrix capital X
for excess returns. Okay, and then um, what you can do after that, you can you can make your variance covariance matrix very easily. Um, I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna put where I want to do my variance covariant matrix. I'm gonna use something called uh, matrix multiplication, and I'm gonna use this formula right here. And so the variance covariant matrix is x primed x divided by n minus one. So I'm going to highlight where I want my matrix to be. I'm going to go equals m multiply, and this prime means transpose. So I'm going to go transpose. And uh, remember, we called that x up there. So when I cl click x, it highlights it. And I'm going to take that times x. And I'm going to divide it by n minus one. Well, that's going to be 5, right? Because there's 5 of them up there. It's 5 minus 1 is uh, 6 minus... There's 6 of them. 6 minus 1 is 5. And now here's the tricky part. Instead of... Uh, i got to close the parentheses. And the tricky part here, when you do this matrix multiplication, you can't hit Enter. you got to hold down Control, hold down Shift, S-H-I-F-T, and then hit Enter. And what did, it, what did I do wrong here? I'll multiply... Let's just see if that correct it, correctly did it. And you can see that this looks exactly like what we have up there. And like I told you, the diagonals are the same. So I only need one half. So these are the variances and these are the covariances. Let me put that formula in here. Remember, you have to hit Control shift enter Now the next thing we can do, we can count. So that we can calculate the, um, the um, excess returns the same way. Just the average times the weights, right? But, but but the portfolio standard deviation is a lot easier to calculate now. Now that we so we can very quickly calculate the variance covariance matrix. And to calculate this, you're gonna use um, this formula right here. And this formula, um, so it's, it's it's a little bit different than this because I might because it's assuming the weights are vertical and we have the base heart, heart horizontal, but it's gonna be very similar. But let's go ahead and highlight this. And I'll call this equal to the var covar, right? So now I can go um, this equals m multiply. Um, so our weights are these weights, right? So I'm just going to highlight those. And then uh, I'm going to take that times the var covar. And then I have to, and then I have to multiply it again. So I'm going to go m multiply, and I have to take that times the transpose of these weights again. Okay, and then uh, close that. Got to spell transpose right, so I better put an s in there. And then we have to take the square root of that. It's just to take the square root. So go S Q R T and then close the parentheses. Again, you have to get control shift enter. And we get the same answer as we got up here. Okay. So that may seem real complicated, but that's actually very handy when you're programming for really big. You don't have to do this, right? If it gets, if it gets to be five or 10 different securities, this equation can get very unwieldy. You saw how I made a mistake just for, just for three securities. So this makes it a little bit quicker because no matter how big this is, it can do this very quickly. So anyway, so that, that's the way you would use matrix multiplication. Remember that you can't type these little curly brackets. You have to hit uh, control, shift, and then enter after you highlight where you want your answer, right? So here I had to highlight everything, start typing, and then type this in, and then go Control Shift Enter. All right. So anyway, hopefully that was interesting. Um, the the videos kind of got kind of long, so I think we'll stop there. I could show you another way to solve it, but I think that's enough for today. So if you like like this video, click on my picture. You can subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up. Give me some comments. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.